this country has a, such an, a big obesity problem right now. How did we get to this point in the last couple decades? You know, this is a guess, but I think that um, this is where a lot of people are um, thinking this is coming from, is that probably it was a low-fat craze mm -hmm. that, that sort of came out in the 60s, 70s, probably, maybe 70s, 80s. Um, and I think that that probably was one of the factors that, that led down that path. You know, it's very unclear. There was probably so many other things that happened around that time, too. Just mm -hmm. the exposure to, to fast food and processed food probably around the same time. But we started, you know, really thinking about fat as bad. You mm -hmm. know, there, was, there, were, there were some studies that looked at heart disease, and they looked at cholesterol. And they, you know, was, they were trying to put, like, one plus one equals two. So they said, well, if you have fat, you make cholesterol, you get heart disease. Um, and it turns out that that's not the case. It's so much more complicated than just high cholesterol sure. that causes heart disease. So there there was a lot of misinformation, a lot of misunderstanding. So everyone thought that, well, if we go on the low-fat diet, that's going to be great, right? We're going to reduce heart disease. Um, we're going to lose weight. But what happened was people, people didn't like the taste of food when it didn't have fat, mm -hmm. and they were hungry. So they wound up eating more calories to make up for the loss of fat, and they started eating carbohydrates to make up for the loss of fat. And a lot of the, the food companies that were making these types of foods were, you know, adding in things for 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 taste, you mm -hmm. know, and so that was, you know, people were in, in, uh, consuming more calories, people were, you know, relying on processed food, and I think that just sort of led down this path. This is probably more complicated than that, but that's one mm -hmm. view. Along that same time, when when everything went low fat or fat free, uh, soy was being pushed as mm -hmm. a big, big health food too, and now mm -hmm. it's starting to be reversed. What, where does soy fit in in terms of, you know? that that health craze and and how good is it for us or not good yeah I mean I think people wanted to believe that you know this vegetarian based mm -hmm. vegan based food could solve our problems and could solve our our, our heart disease mm -hmm. and, and obesity the problem with soy um, there are so many levels on so many levels it's a, it's a problem um, soy is uh, very processed most of the soy that's available in this country and in order to get it into the state that's edible it's been changed uh, so many sure. times and and it's become very estrogenic in the form that we are eating it in in so you know we were i worry about soy exposure you know in children and in and in women and even in, in men we're being exposed to these i'll call them xenoestrogens mm -hmm. they're estrogens that are not na uh, natural to our own body and that's wreaking havoc that's doing things that we don't know what it's doing exactly so mm -hmm. soy is a problem on that level the other problem with soy is that it's genetically modified for the most part you know, there's mm -hmm. very little soy that's available in this country that's not genetically modified, and I think that's a problem. And the mm -hmm. same goes goes to uh, uh, corn as well, mm -hmm. also mostly genetic, genetically modified. That's a problem. And that's bad. Why? Do we even know? You know, I think that what we're, we're concerned about is that, you know, when you change a plant, uh, you introduce certain properties to that plant that mm -hmm. we don't know how that affects uh, the receptors in our cell and what our body does to, to those um, compounds. Mm -hmm.